another one to do it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Barbara McNulty, director of the Suzanne H. Arnold Art Gallery, and we welcome you here this evening. I just want to let you know that this program is being live streamed, and we're just so excited to, uh, to be able to present this. The program will last from 5 to 6, and then we will have time for questions afterwards if you'd like to come up and look at some of the materials that Jay Smart has brought along with him. Uh, I invite you to do so. And so we welcome you to our lecture in conjunction with the exhibition, Our Strength is Our People, The Humanist Photographs of Lewis Hine. I would like to thank Jeff Snyder, Chair of the Music Department, for his collaboration and the financial support from the Music Department in helping to host this event. I have to say it was so nice to finally meet Jay this evening. We've been planning this for three years, so um, anyway. In terms of upcoming events, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Dr. Shannon Egan, Director of the Schmucker Art Gallery, Gettysburg College, and specialist in photography and contemporary art will be presenting the lecture Our Working Year, Lewis Hine in Focus. And that will be on March 17th at 5 p.m. And we have brochures out in the lobby if you care to look at our table on your way out. This evening, we look forward to an informative yet musical and historical program with original coal mining songs Northeastern Pennsylvania, where Jay Smart resides. It will include documented songs of this region during the early 1900s, highlighting the everyday struggles and life of the European coal miner in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Jay's grandfather mined coal in Schuylkill and Carbon County, PA, for over 50 years, and we have a photograph of poster board. Songs sung by miners recorded by folklorist journalist George Corson of Pottsville, Pennsylvania are performed as well as songs about more contemporary issues such as the fires of Centralia, which we will be hearing this evening, that documents the 50-year-old coal fire that burns until this day. George Corson, who was a journalist in Scoopo in the mid-1900s, recorded coal miners' songs and poetry and published them in one book titled Minstrels of the Mine Patch. There is a copy of this book and a display, as I mentioned before, containing photos and other information that Jay will reference during the program. Um, you might wonder about the connection to Lewis Hine, and um, I just wanted to mention that many of the young boys working in these mines were documented by legendary social documentary photographer Lewis Hine, uh, who is cur uh, currently featured in the gallery, and I invite you to visit after the presentation. Our guest, Jay Smart, will perform these songs accompanied by guitar and banjo, and at the end of the program, we'll sing, fiddle, and flatfoot clog dance simultaneously on a piece of amplified wood that I'm standing on. I think I'd like to give it a try. <laughs> anyway, please help me to welcome Chang.
I'll start off with, uh, since the program is titled Football and Coal Mining Science of North East Pennsylvania, uh, we're talking about the carbon scoop of Lackawanna, Missouri County, particularly uh, the town of Jim Thorpe. I'm sure most of you have been up there the occasionally meeting at one time or not. If you haven't, it would be a, a great place to go for like even a day trip. But uh, the folklore will go outside the town of Jim Thorpe. Well, I should say we'll start with Jim Thorpe used to be called Mock Chunk many years ago because we had the Lene Lenape Indians in that region who were also part of the Delaware Indians. So a lot of the towns in our region have Lene Lenape names, Tamaqua, Tuscarora, and Esquihoning, and so forth. And the town uh, was renamed Jim Thorpe uh, after a very famous na uh, native athlete uh, of the 1912 uh, Olympics in Sweden, and uh, that was done in 1954. His wife had a little bit to do with that. So the town was called Mount Chuck, and outside the town there's a, a waterfall called Glenanoko. And uh, keep that name in mind, Glenanoko. I'll tell you about it after the, the song then. Uh, the legend goes that Anoko was a Native American princess who fell in love with a fur trader. Her father, the chief, forbid this love, he didn't want them to see each other. So they had the fur trader executed by pushing them off the waterfall. There's three of them up there, the biggest one being about 90 feet or so. And Onoko was hiding out in the bushes, and she saw her boyfriend, lover, husband-to-be get executed, could no longer live without her love, and also decided to take her own life by jumping off the waterfall. And they say at about quarter after nine in the morning, you could still see her spirit flowing across the water. This is called the Ballad of Glen Onoko. <laughs> Up in the Appalachian Mountains, hides a mysterious natural fountain, was known to all of his boys for Where Delaware Indians gathered round to discuss their forest hunting grounds, where hawks and buzzards all they could have seen. A hunter came upon the tribe, wanting just to trade some hides and rest his weary head there for a spell. And after swapping skins, he slaughtered, discovered a beautiful Indian daughter. Never knew she did get so well. And the Indian she thought, Could it be this man called Opachini came to take a daughter from his side? Would it be her father's jealousy? I don't remember his bride. Soon the eyes begin to glare. There's only two my love could share. The chief then cast the young man's feet. A council held at sunrise point. Where all the tribe would come and join and judge the rights of the young girl's mate. But oh, Petit never had a chance. He knew but the Indians tribal to dance. Soon if so, would walk in heaven over hell. And there, when the council gave their sins, hiding out in the road of Dandran's princess, thought of life without her love. Open up, go, your heart's filled with pain. It was true love you had found. Open up, go, and your life be the same. When his body hits the ground, it got into the highest cliff, trembling at the sight of it, waiting for his judgment day. They pushed him off and down, he plunged. The chief relaxed, his pride was won. Knowing there could be no other way. No girl's life could not go on. She screamed and threw herself along over the cliff. Joined her lover's body there. Now her memories fill the air at the bottom of the land. And it was said. People to this day insist that on the walls the plan of the falls walks the spirit of the mist. And though she's gone, the waterfall flows on with the rest class in the end so and it's been seen as what the night between the spirit of the new world.
song title and, and I cut this out I have it at home this is no word to lie instead of them printing the ballad of Glenn and Yoko they printed the ballad of John and Yoko <laughs> true story I have it at home to coal mining everybody sort of had a hero that not necessarily discovered coal because the Native Americans used coal on a small basis and also blacksmiths used coal on a, on a small basis but people who industrialized, they really made a living out of selling it. Uh, one of the, I guess, documented, the first discovery was in Pottsville by a gentleman named Echo Allen. And then there were a few others that were the Smith brothers up in the scrap Wilkesbury area. And in our area, I'm originally from a little town called Coaldale, which is west of uh, Jim Thorpe that I just mentioned about, about uh, 15 minutes or so forth. And Coaldale is part of the valley called Panther Valley. It's comprised of the towns of Lansford, Coaldale, Summit Hill, Nesquahoning, and Lake Hara. And the story goes up in the town of Summit Hill, there was a gentleman named Philip Ginther. Uh, he was a farmer, and he was out hunting one day, and it was raining pretty profusely, pretty hard, and he had this big rim hat on, and uh, he had his gun over his shoulder, he didn't get anything, and he was on his way home, and he accidentally kicked this black rock. And he heard stories from the Native Americans that there was this rock in the region, this black rock in the region that burned. So he took it home and did some experiments with it. He found out it not only did it burn, it burned hot, and it burned hot for a long time. He figured, I could sell this stuff. People would use it. So he contacted people throughout the region. The city of Brotherly Love, Philadelphia, wanted all the coal we could give it to them. Problem was get, getting it there. But coal miners, if they didn't have it, they invented it. And the town of Summit Hill, from the town of Jim Thorpe, uh, geographically is just about nine miles. So they knew there was the Lehigh River coming down through, uh, actually splitting the town of Jim Thorpe. And they figured if they could get the coal from the town of Summit Hill to the town of Mock Chunk, as it was called back then, they could put it on boats and barges, ship it down to Philadelphia for sale. Their problem was solved. The problem still existed then, getting it from the little town of Summit Hill to Jim Thorpe. So they came up with this idea for a gravity railroad. There was a, a railroad called the Switchback Railroad. I do have a couple of photographs over here. If you look on the third aisle down, right in the middle, there's a photograph of it. And also in the second row here, there's a darker gray photograph. And you're welcome to check these out after the program. But uh, to make a long story short, the coal miners used it on uh, weekdays and weekends. They gave rides on it. And to make a very long story short, it's where they invented the first roller coaster. It was 1791 when Philip Ginther and his gun left only to hunt a family meal. But having kicked a gun game, he headed home. Something with his ears. 
Now traditions of that country's soil occurred to him and people shifted off to Philadelphia. The gifted sat and waited till he had called in some of him and transist a printer in his day. There's a cold in summer hell, cold in summer hell. Come to Carver County, there's work for all the plenty. There's a cold in summer hell, they say. Cold in summer hell, come to Carver County, there's a cold in summer hell. Now get the boys to show them to sit the location of the incident and then return title them some land. Then system wives began to see to find the Lehigh Coal Mine Company and to go to Hellegar and through him. But upon inspecting rocks of coal, discovered it was part of Stone and water down there, palms, fruits, tops. A boiler filled and sent to square. Only put the flame out there. The coal was left to use for sidewalks. But later on, they found it true. The coal that burned the flame was blue. The mine to river was not pyro stove. So ways we needed to deliver black diamond to the Lehigh River. And 1827 sun switch back railroad. There's coal in summer hell, coal in summer hell. Come to Carver County, there's work for all plenty. There's coal in summer, they say. Coal in Railroad cars and top shot not work around it, run down the mound to the speed of 65. To coal ships at the Marchon station, on to march the transportation, an uphill mule trip to a three hours ride. And as the need for coal increased, caused the need for mules to see. Better way it was needed up the plain. So a back tramp built in 44 was to be the opening door for roller coasters of the present day. And steam engine that were the juice, the pole, the party, the caboose were located at two different planes. No cause now on bands of steel were pulled to top by a huge wheel, returning them back up to Lady again. There's coal in summer hell, coal in summer hell. Come to Carver County, there's work for all the plenty. There's coal in summer hell, there's coal in This tree that had a twofold pride, a weekend's boys and amusement ride, a four one dollar bar, a miner's view. But after years of work and pleasure, progressive times, progressive pressure, in 1937, so which that was through. And as the hands of time move on, switch that rubber now has gone, leaving only these walking trails. 
But as you walk upon the soil, imagine your red days of old, when they found their cold and summer It's cold and summer So this is a tune by a friend of mine named Lex Romaine from the Scranton area. 
It's called the break of boys. Break of boys, break of boys, and the time to play with toys. They go to work before the sun. They don't get home until work is done. Break of boys, break of boys, and to shout above the noise. I'm picking slate from the tall. They make the money but lose the soul. Tis nine years old, should be in school. Learn to live the golden rule. You should learn to read and write. Not just learn to cuss and fight. Tis tobacco, smokes and smokes. I just pay from his folks. He drinks his whiskey when he can. He's out to prove that he's a man. A braver boy can hide his tears. A foreman's cane is what he fears. You work too slow, a curse and yell. You wish that he would go to hell. You have to laugh to get the stare. Your punch your boss, he'll dock your share. Now whack your back until it's red. And he wish that he was dead. Break a boy, break a boys, and time to play with toys. They go to work before the sun. They don't get home to work is done. Break a boy, break a boys, and to shout above the noise. From picking slate from the coal, they make the money but lose the soul. Break a boys to need to men. They work the money. Into bed. When drives a mule, one works a drill, there is no job he cannot fill. And now that he's a man, anyone can understand that he's the first you would employ because he was a breaker boy. Breaker boys, breaker boys, have the time to play with toys. They go to work before the sun. They don't get home to work is done. Break a boy, break a boy, just have to shout above the boys. And pick a slate from the call. They make the money but lose their soul. And pick a slate from the call. They make the money but lose their soul. Continuing with further jobs in the coal mines, uh, the Europeans really, if you weren't German or Welsh, you had no idea how to mine coal. They had no experience. The German and the Welsh were made the mine bosses here uh, primarily because they had some experience. They are also some of the first Europeans to migrate over here to uh, work in the coal mines. So it was just natural that they would do that. But uh, you know, if you were like my grandfather was Slavic, his name was Krakowicz. Uh, or if you were Italian, or especially the Irish, uh, you can never work your way up to be a coal mine boss. So there was a little bit of a, you know, problems going on there. But uh, one of the, the jobs in the mines was working in 30-inch coal. 30-inch coal is about this size of the vein of the coal. There's different size veins in the coal. But in this song, it's 30-inch coal. And in 30-inch coal, uh, you've all seen documentaries or film footage of coal miners in a coal mine going in on a train. They're usually sitting upright like you and I are now. And 30 inch coal, you lay on your back or you lay on your stomach and you're inserted into that vein. And that's how you work into a 10 or 12 hour shift. And I did have the pleasure of speaking with a, a gentleman who was a school teacher up in Williams Valley, Pennsylvania. Williams Valley is the northwest corner of uh, Schuylkill County up near Lincoln. So if you're familiar with that and he was a teacher nationally for three months and for three months he worked in his parents coal mine and he said he worked in 30 inch coal he said it was that confining in there that when he went to take a drink of water from his thermos he couldn't put it in front of his face he had to tip it off to the side so if you're claustrophobic this was not the job for you and uh this song was actually uh written uh in the kentucky tennessee area uh we had george corson uh as I mentioned before, uh, George Corson, who recorded coal miners in this region, but he did not sing songs or anything. In the Kentucky, Tennessee area, they had a gentleman there named George Tucker, who was very instrumental in organizing the unionization 
uh, coal miners in that particular region. And not only did he record other people singing coal mining songs, but he himself sang coal mining tunes. And this is a song a friend of his named uh, uh, Mike Paxton wrote called 30 Inch Coal. And you'll hear this song riding on a lizard in the 30 Inch Coal. The lizard was nicknamed for the train. These guys had to wear elbow pads and knee pads. It's a real quick song. Grab a pick and shovel and mine a light. Don't forget your fuses and your dynamite. Put on your knee pads and your safety toes. We're going to the coal mine where the cold is cold. Right on a laser in a 30 inch pole. See the cable spark and bunch of little wheels roll. Timber up your head and set the wedges tight. Or your wife and your children won't see you tonight. Spread it out of the rock dust, spread a little bit more to keep that cold dust on the mining floor. Rotten on a laser and a 30 inch pole. See the cable sparking and watch the moon's roll. Oh, Lord have mercy, what a mighty soul. Down on your poor knees in the 30 inch pole. That was 30 inch cold, and then I went to a tune of mine called uh, Yankee March. Just wanted to do something just to prove that I do happy music as well, too. With uh, Europeans, like I said, not really understanding uh, how to properly call mine, uh, there were a lot of accidents. And uh, this next particular song, actually, on the far wall of the museum over here, there is a a thing about the Avondale mine disaster. Now, Avondale was a mine on uh, Route 11 in between Wilkesbury and Bloomsburg. And why they wrote a song of it, it was the first major disaster in the anthracite field. 110 boys and men lost their particular life in this disaster. And as most of you are aware, uh, there's basically two ways to mine coal. There's the strip mining, 
you put dynamite into the mountain and you blow apart the mountain to get to the mineral. And then there would be the shaft mining, which would remind you much of like an elevator, which they seldom do anymore. Although some uh, bootleg coal miners uh, do that. Bootleg mean it's a private owned uh, company that will do that. Uh, usually a family run service. But uh, this happened to be a shaft mine, and, and like I said, you know, when you make experiments, uh, or try experiments sometimes, they backfire. And this was in the case of the Appdale mine disaster, it happened to be a shaft mine. And the old time coal miners thought it was a good idea at the bottom of that shaft to build a fire. Now the purpose of the fire, they was to, to move the hot the hot air, move the cold air around so the coal miners could breathe a little bit better. Well, one day the fire got out of hand and thinking maybe some hay from feeding the mules or so forth got onto the fire, ignited it, and it burned its way up to the top of the breaker, to the top of the building, and more or less suffocated these 110 boys and men. But it was after this accident occurred that they instituted a new coal mining law that you had to have two ways in and out of the coal mine. Prior to that way, prior to that law, it was one way in and one way out. So uh, if any good came out of this situation, uh, it was this. So uh, this was actually recorded inside the Newkirk coal mine uh, by George Corson, recorded a gentleman named John Quinn, sick of this back in 1956. If you see the second photograph, here's uh, some coal miners standing up there fiddling and all that. I'll get into that in a little bit. But that's the new Kirk coal mine outside of Tamarco. So uh, this was recorded in there and it was sung a cappella, and I just kind of put some uh, chords to it. Avondale Mine Disaster. Good Christians all bought brave and small and faith and heavenly. And listen with attention what the truth that will declare. When you hear this lamentation, it will come to you. Well, of the suffocation of the mines of On the sixth day of September, 1869, those miners of them got a car to go work in the mines. But then up to date, then, 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 children, their hearts were filled with joy. To see that man go to that work likewise every boy. But a dismal sight on Monday night soon made them turn pale. When they saw the breaker burning over the mines of Avondale. From here and there and everywhere they traveled in a crowd. Some tearing off their clothes and hair and crying out aloud. Yeah, that the husbands and the sons death is going to steal their lives away without delay in the months of that and day. But all in vain, there was no hope one single soul to save. For not a second of the from the subterranean cave, no pen can write the gone on bright and horror that prevailed. Among those dying victims in the months of Then the sounds was just to volunteer for to go down this dismal shed to see their comrades dear. Two Welshmen brave without display, courage without fail. Went down the shaft without delay in the minds of Avondale. When at the bottom they arrived and thought to make their way, one of them darker blocked the barrel, the other in great dismay. He gave a sign, a hoist them up to tell the dreadful tale. Then all was lost forever in the minds of heaven there. Every effort they had to place to send them some first share. Those men that next went down again, and then they took good care. They traversed through the chambers, and this time did not fail in finding those dead bodies in the mines of heaven day. 
67 was the number that in the keyboard found. It seemed that they were the quiet thing that came underneath the ground. They found the father with this unclass bit his own so pale. It was a heart rendering the scene of the lines of that out there. Now to conclude and make an end of the world and down. A hundred and ten of brave strong men were smothered underground. They're in the graves till this last day they went on the man declare and the orphans' cries. They're in the skies all around to heaven. Care about 
And uh, with the, the long working days, the 12 hour working shift and healthy working conditions, the low pay scale, uh, the coal barons kept on piling more and piling more on top of uh, the, the coal miner and uh, nobody was doing anything about it. And up steps to Molly McGuire. Now Molly McGuire was actually a woman from Ireland who were, for some reason was being evicted from her house. Uh, her son got a gang together, they went after the landlord, there was a shootout in the street, and the, the son got killed. Now that gang is said to stay intact, to come over here to work in the coal fields of northeast Pennsylvania. And they sort of, it, uh, they were accused, I'm going to say accused of a lot of things, because there was never any hardcore evidence. Uh, what they did is they fought back. They were one that their voices heard, they were accused of blowing up like coal mine bosses' houses or the, the coal mine itself. And uh, they joined uh, an organization called the Ancient Order of Hibernians, which is a very Catholic, very proper organization in the Northeast. So if they would say, oh, Jack McGill, he must be a Molly McGuire. He bit up, uh, beat up so-and-so last night. They would say, oh, no, he can never do that. He's a member of the Ancient Order of Hibernians. So it was a very proper organization that they hid behind. But they fought for the coal miners' rights and so forth. And they uh, hired a detective uh, Detective Pinkerton agency out of Philadelphia to come break them. Did anybody ever see the movie The Molly Maguires? It's around, I guess, in the 1960s, late 60s or so forth. Sean Connery was in it, and uh, part of it was filmed in the Jim Thorpe area. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this is The Rise and Fall of Molly Maguires. This is on my new album called uh, Give Me Back. Started on the island about nine stones ago. A woman named McGuire was in the street to go. A sign petty landlord and stuck on the ground. But in the midst, some bullets flew and killed the young man down. Now at the funeral of the lad, the remaining sons did bow to confront the landlord murderer. And Somehow, word spread all about the county, excitement grew the higher. That soon the sons would take their toll, the sons of Molly McGuire. Leaders joined the relatives to one of us mission to run. They gave the ground like fertile shrubs to leave their side to win. After the revenge complete, the membership did stay and spread to Scotland and England and British colonies. Finally, to America, and towns of Manchester, to streets of gold, they were told, but none found such a lie. For six a day, they were enslaved to labor and day ships, and for broken tools, their pay reduced. Push them to their wits. The ancient daughter of Hibernians were Catholic mates. Said to be chartered, they in the Keystone State. But more than Mars, time went by. Some say that it was so. That the two Irish memberships, the same boat did grow. One day it detected. James McParland, working for the government under Alan Pinkerton, posing as a mining loader, soon to join their gang, with one intention in his mind to see the Mollies hang. Next thing is the gang was pinned for every act of fear. From a part and wants to shut his mouth, to open up his ears. Murders on my count of twelve would be my curse. The courts would trust a detective's tale, but not in Molly's word. Hearing the conclusion of his observation time, whispers of his assassination plagued on his mind. Suspicion of detective rape hinted through the squad, so he went from the county to Philadelphia. Having collected evidence, the Molly didn't pursue. Try as dated convictions may, will mostly do. The 
Those of them all unjustly hang will never be at rest. To reason, time we burst their crime in judgment, God we trust. The counties now of school and a carbon with a seat. Where the mummies dug the fields, so unions plant the seed. Now, when you travel through the east and the mountains grow the higher, remember once the only sons, the sons of my choir. We're going to end up with a little bit of flat foot uh, clog dancing. I mentioned about George Corson recording coal miners. And uh, he mentions uh, in his book that actually this kid up right over here is from a book called Pennsylvania Profiles. Uh, the gentleman is from Lower uh, Lancaster and Willow Street down there. Uh, his name is Patrick Reynolds, and he always documents uh, uniquities in, in Pennsylvania. And he states that some of the musicians would grab a uh, coal miners, they grab a piece of sheet metal from the local coal mine, and they would go from coal patch town to coal patch town and dance, fiddle, and sing for food or clothing for a night's lodging. He even goes on the very last paragraph. He mentioned some of the musicians that would do them, that would do this. Some of them were Con Carmen was from Hazelton, Mark Mahal from Shenandoah, William Keating from Pottsville, Patrick and Jack Johnson from Summit Hill, Barney Kelly from Ashland, Dennis Coyle, Michael McGagan from Wilkesbury, Harry Tennis from St. Clair, Bob Quigley, and Jerry Byrne from Buck Run, last words Joe Gallagher, and there's always Tommy Rollins from uh, Edwardsville. So I'd like to uh, thank you all for coming out. I'd like to thank uh, the Art Gallery, and particularly um, um, uh, uh, professors uh, here for uh, allowing me to perform uh, uh, my program here. You're welcome to come to my website. It's jsmar.com, J-A-Y-S-M-A-R.com. Uh, and also, my stuff is also on uh, CD Baby, iTunes, and Spotify. You can come listen to uh, a lot of my music on Spotify as well. I do have recordings here you're welcome to check out. So uh, thank you so much, Professor McNulty. And also Professor Snyders, thank you so much. This is a tune about my grandpa. Uh, could never be a coal miner, as I mentioned, due to his Slavic uh, ethnicity, and I'm very happy to say back in 2017, this was nominated for a traditional song of the year by Just Plain Folk out of uh, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. Ammo, come on. Take me to share my children don't
Still that one can still go to a city, the clog dancing, and hear the music? Uh, the clog dancing, I'm not sure about up here in the Northeast because it's more of a southern Appalachian type thing. You know, probably once you hit Maryland and all that, I was just uh, telling a professor uh, a little while ago, I perform every September at Frostburg University in Frostburg, Maryland, down near Hagerstown, Hagerstown area, and they have a lot of clog down there. There's a lot of old time stuff. So that's one of the places. And I believe in Harrisburg, if you check with their folk society, uh, the Susquehanna Folk Society, uh, they have advertisements there too. And I think they get clock dancers every now and then. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Did they actually take canaries in the coal mines? Did they take canaries in the coal mines? Yes, they did, yes. So don't, don't forget this was before any kind of you know, uh, animal rights type thing. They used to do that. They also did it with dogs as well, too. And the purpose of that, for those of you unfamiliar with, they were checking the gases in the mines. A lot of these, as I mentioned before, about bootleg mines. Bootleg mines are more or less run by families or privately owned uh, coal mines. So they're not really government inspected or, or, or anything. So uh, you take your chance when you do have that. And they would do that even in, in, in the mines that were owned and operated, you know, uh, legally uh, by the you know, by the different coal companies, yes, they would, would put them down there. If the gas was bad, if the canary came up and it was passed away, they knew they couldn't mine there. There was too much gas. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I, I think you said that your father worked in the mine for 50 my, years? My grandfather worked your in the mine. Your grandfather, yes. Okay. 
I mean, what kinds of things did he share with you? Not much. He was just, I was four when he passed away. Uh, this is a picture of him here. And that's actually in the back of my coal mining album. My, actually, my coal mining album is a compilation CD by myself and four other authors of the Northeast uh, who are just trying to preserve our heritage up there. And there's a 12-page booklet inside of that explaining each tune, uh, tune, like Centralia and so forth, in a little bit further detail. Uh, but I do have CDs with happy music on. <laughs> Just let anybody know. Anybody else? Yes, please. Um, what was the age range of the breaker boys? Once again, please. How old were the breaker boys? Oh, how old were the uh, breaker boys? Uh, they were as young as six years old working there. And then as they got older, uh, they would progress to a different job, you know, some of them. Uh, uh, this up here, this page, has a whole, I'll bring that down for you to view a little bit closer after the show if you like, but there's all the positions that a lot of the miners did as they got older too, you know, but it had to do with ethnicity too. Like I said, the German and the Welsh were always elevated to my boss, but like my grandfather said, like, did, like in that last song, he could never be my boss, no matter how hard he worked, because he was Slavic. Anybody else? Any questions? Well, thank you so much for coming, everybody. Uh, welcome to view these things if you like, and uh, thank you for supporting the arts. And together, the music department. This is also uh, uh, my old friend uh, Derek Houston, wherever he may be. <laughs>